Do you know what always pains me whenever I play a game? Whenever there's like some shop button, like over here, for example, right? And then I press the shop button and like, you know, the shop appears in the middle. And then the shop button just disappears. And to close the shop, there's like some new button that's like on the very opposite side of the screen. That's annoying, right? Not only is that annoying, it's also like inconvenient, right? Why can't this button just stay here? Why can't I just click the button and make the shop appear and then click the button again and make the shop disappear? So this tutorial is exactly for that. And I'll also teach you how to make like a key bind. So, you know, you press a, you press a key and it also toggles whatever GUI you have. So let's just start, you know, let's make a screen GUI, of course. You need a screen GUI to um, view the GUI, by the way. And then let's start off with, mm, I don't know, a text button, right? And we'll just add it here, you know, make it like somewhat small. So this is going to be our toggle button, okay? And then I'll make a frame and let's just pretend, oh, uh, what is this thing? Let's move it here. <laughs> and l let's just pretend that this frame is going to be our shop, right? So I'll just make it, you know, slightly bigger and I'll just position it here, right? This will be our shop. And then I'll just set it to invisible. So visible equals not true. So what do we have right now? We have a button and we have the shop frame. And actually scripting this is very easy. This will be a very quick tutorial. So, you know, you add a new local script inside the text button. And by the way, this has to be a local script. So you, this cannot be like a server script or a module script it has to be a local script. So then we're going to do script.parent. And dot parent, by the way, if you don't know, is like, it's, it's what's on top. So script.parent, meaning the button, dot activated. So whenever it's pressed, and then we connect it to a brand new function. So now whenever the button is pressed, this code will run, like whatever's inside here. And so what we want to do is we want to toggle the frame. And now this is the big, this is like the, the whole point of the tutorial, right? What I've seen so many people do, and this boggles my mind, is, okay, they want to make a toggle. Meaning, in their head, they're like, okay, meaning that when the frame is not visible, we want to make it visible. But then when the frame is visible, we want to make it invisible. And so you know what these guys do? They make, okay, so let's just create like a, like a variable for the frame. So we'll just do local frame equals uh, script.parent.parent.frame. Yep, script.parent.parent. Let's just do a wait for child, you know, just to make sure it's loaded dot frame. <coughs> Okay, so this frame <clears throat> variable is now this frame, right? So what people do is they say, if frame dot uh, visible equals true, then frame, or I don't know, something like that, then, then frame dot visible equals false. Else, frame, like, you, you know, like this, this kind of works, right? But this is what you came here for. This is the main part of the tutorial. Frame dot visible equals not frame dot visible. This is it. If the frame, so for example, the frame dot visibility is equal to the current frame visibility, but the opposite of that. So if the frame is invisible, then not invisible means visible, right? And vice versa. And so if I run this game right now, I've just saved you. Awesome. Awesome. We've just successfully created a toggle button. And now, you know what? Just for fun, just for fun, let's make a key bind. And I'll actually, I'll show you how to do that. So to actually make key binds, you know, we have to use this thing called user input service. So I'll just do local UIS, you know, stands for user input service. And it will get the service user input service awesome and then we'll just do here uis dot um input began connected to a function and then we get our input and then we'll just say if input dot user input type equals enum dot user input type dot let's just say actually no wait 
It's like enum.keyboard. Something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So basically, if the input equals E, or we could do K, I don't know. Let's do K. Why not? If input equals K, then we'll just copy this line. So now whenever we press K, the, it, the shop should be, should be toggleable. This might not work. Interesting. Okay. So I, I clicked K right now, but it didn't work. Which is very interesting. Maybe, maybe that key code. Because this is key code as well. Let's just try this. And let's see what happens. See, this is, I'm not cutting this out. Awesome. Now it works. Because both of them are now key codes. See, I don't cut this out because everyone makes mistakes, you know, motivational, Mot motivation. I, I hope you're motivated right now. So you see K, I don't like he's moving too much. Okay. Button. And then I press K, I press K, then I press the button. And as you can see, it perfectly toggles the shop. So again, I'll stop that. Here's the local script. You know, you could copy and paste the code. However, I do recommend kind of, you know, going over it by yourself, understanding what all of this means, you know, just memorizing this line in your head because it is going to help you a lot. And then once you do that, I'll delete the GUI and we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.